Well, it has been called the greatest concentration of military might in the world. We're talking about Hamptons Road, Virginia, home to facil facilities for each branch of the military with more than 100,000 military and 40,000 civilian personnel serving in the area. It's also a coastal region, already prone to major flooding during heavy rain events and certainly tropical systems. And with rising sea levels, the military may be facing its toughest enemy yet. All right, so take a look at Hampton Roads with a projected sea level rise of 135 and eight feet. You can see in the upper right hand corner one. Now there's three um, and then it will keep going up. This is going to put major installations, including Langley Air Force Base and Naval Station Norfolk at risk. Yeah, they already have issues with high tides. The effects of Norfolk uh, alone would be massive. Naval Air Station in Norfolk is the largest naval complex in the world. So to discuss the impacts of sea level rise at this site, we bring in our expert. Joining us now from Arlington, Virginia is Dr. Gerald Galloway, Brigadier General, U.S. Army retired. Sir, thank you for joining us. Thank you for your service, first of all. Yeah. What types of impacts are you seeing already? Well, you can see on a, almost a, a very frequent weekly or monthly basis uh, flooding in these installations. The airfield at uh, Langley can go underwater. The uh, installation at Norfolk Naval Station has places that you can't reach during certain periods. What was once nuisance flooding, occasionally something would flood with a high tide now is occurring more often and the projections under sea level rise are for that to dramatically increase. At the same time, the land in that area is subsiding. So it's a double whammy. Mm, so always. have you guys taken any precautions right now and or have you made any fixes with the current flooding? Well, I think that the military as a whole, all the services are very active in trying to determine is what is the risk. Uh, they've analyzed what will be the sea level rise, what will be the other factors that will influence their ability to carry out their missions, and they're looking to see where the first steps need to be taken to ensure that uh, people can get to the ships in Norfolk Naval Air Station. You can use the, the runway when it's needed and at Fort Eustis up the uh, Hampton Roads area that they'll be able to continue to use their facilities. Then once they do that, they put in the programs and take the immediate actions. Mm -hmm. You can't do everything at once. You can't plan for 2100 right now, but you can take the steps that are going to make sure you're ready tomorrow, five years, 10 years, and 15 years, and stack those in some sort of priority system. So, General, all week long we've been talking to uh, cities like Boston and Miami about them just getting in the beginning stages of their plan. Where is uh, the Defense Department in their stage? Well, the Defense Department's been at this actually for about 13 years, looking at what are going to be the challenges. And in recent times, uh, a major focus has been on Hampton Roads, obviously. But it's not just the military. It's the, the, the family that exists down there, Old right. Dominion University, right. others that are working. Because the people that work at Norfolk Naval Air Station and the people that work at Langley live off the base. Uh, many of them service members, others yeah. are civilians. And we need to make sure the community and the bases are moving forward together. So the, the services have been actively working at it. Now the challenge is to get the funds necessary in sequence to do the infrastructure changes right. that are necessary to make it work. We're about to talk about Tampa, but real quick before we do, where would you say is the biggest concern, you know, which base, stateside or even around the world, if you have that knowledge? Well, I think the Defense Department has said, uh, let's look at Hampton Roads because it has this uh, the tremendous challenge of being in an area susceptible to uh, coastal storms. It is having sea level rise and right. then it has this subsidence. Right. And, and it's so valuable to us in so many ways. General, is there any way to fathom, I, I just got to ask him, any way to fathom the amount of dollars that it would take for this project? Well, I think they're scrapping to put that together, but it's going to take a long while. And again, I'd emphasize that we need to do some things now, some things in 15 and 20 years, and then some things uh, 30 or 40 years. We need to be attuned to what's happening with sea level rise, keep track of it, and then step in where it's necessary, whether it's at Camp Lejeune or mm -hmm. in Florida or at some other location. Yeah. General Galloway, yeah, thank, thank you again for your service that. And, and that great advice. Let's take a look at Tampa here quickly because another area, McDill Air Force Base, I think this is only about eight feet above sea level here. So we've got issues here where we're talking about a, a bay that's uh, you know, 15 feet that when you start rising mm -hmm. that water, There's Stephanie. There's McDill Air Force Base right. uh, in the area. You have the airfield, the landing strips, of course, schools, houses. And, just like exactly, like the general said, it's not just the military yeah, facilities. The it, it is people and lives that live in these areas.